hello everyone so today we will discuss about the historical development of road construction of indian scenario means what are the history from the basic construction of the road because you are all aware about that the roads are various types of road the urban road rural road the metro city road express way the national highway state highway so there are various type of terminology based on the area where the roads are constructed so what is the uh, hierarchical development or progress for construction of the road that will be discussed in today's class so this is basically the introduction of your highway development in india that what are the various committees we will discuss the various committees various plans like nagpur road plan bombay road plan these are all the 20 years plan means they have some prepared some plan for the new, what will they what they will going to prepare for the next 5 years just like if you consider the today scenario uh, after every 5 years our transport minister will be changed so during this 5 years he or she have to prepare a road network plan or plan for next 5 years so that is his or her propaganda so in this way in previous time also there is a 20 years plan so what are the what are these plans what they have suggested what are their assumption what is their resolution from this meetings that will be discussed in today's class so before uh, going to today uh, discussion of today's class let me introduce myself myself dr devasi das i am the assistant professor of civil engineering department uh, in jis college of engineering kalyani so here my contact number email id and whatsapp number is given so for any doubt you can reach me to this contact number and the email id so before we starting the sub subject or the topic it's uh, better to let uh, discuss about the what topic we are covered in this module so basically we will cover the functions of the irc that is the indian road congress central road research institute crri then the motor vehicle act the jcar committee recommendation the saturation saturation system population unit productivity unit highway cost analysis transportation demand analysis preparation of the project report so today we will discuss only about the various types of committees this in the jaikar committee nagpur road plan mumbai road plan and what are the various types of the uh, process or steps to develop the highway in next class we will discuss about the basic thing about the population unit the cost analysis and dpr that is called the detailed project report the last topic the preparation of the project report so dpr is one of the very important thing you have to uh, keep uh, prepare a dpr for any type of project for any type of work whether you are in pw for any irrigation work or pw pwd work or roadways so you have to prepare a dpr so the dpr is very essential and the transportation demand analysis this thing will be covered in the next class the basic thing the basic thing of this four terminology will be discussed in the next class so first uh, what is the role of the transportation so it is basically a economic industrial social and cultural development so if you see that in some places suppose the place is totally remote area but due to some uh, industry or due to some uh, business area or the business of some roads are constructed on that area so uh, uh, with this peripheral of this road or the peripheral of this industry there will be economical growth there will be social growth there will be cultural growth so a road is a very vital thing for the social development economical development and cultural development of any area next is the production stage that is the raw material and distribution stage that is the farm and the factories means the whatever foods are produced or whatever crop are uh, produced by the farmer that need to be uh, transported and what is the mean of the transport is by the transportation system so the transportation system is one of the very vital uh, stage or vital uh, topic of discussion in uh, today's scenario not in today's today's scenario from the ancient time because from their time itself they need to transport the goods item or the weapons for the uh, world during the world war 1 world war 2 the so this the basic road construction the construction of road is basically initiated during the world war 1 and world war 2 why because they need to transport their weapon so from there itself they they are prepared the uh, basic types of macadam road 
so i will come this details there what is macadam what is semi macadam this thing so they have to prepare the road so from that time it till the preparation of the road is or construction of road is one of the vital issue so next is the production stages means to uh, the raw material to produce to transport the raw material for manufacturing of any final product so what is the objective the objective is safe efficient economical transportation facility for travel to passenger and transportation goods so transportation are always in two terms one is transportation of passenger another is transportation of goods so the transportation should be uh, should satisfy these three point one is safe the transportation should be safe the transportation should be efficient and uh, it should definitely be economical though it is a safe and efficient but due to the monetary effect or due to the financial aspect the transportation cannot be sustained for the long time so a sustainable transportation system should be in, in initiated uh, so that uh, the passengers can avail the facility and the main thing is the economical or the financial aspect so if you see the other uh, early development the roads have been uh, in use of thousands of years it is basically a trade road yes it is basically they use the use the road for the trading purpose for trading of goods for trading of weapons so these are the basic uh, usability of that trans road in the ancient time in 4000 bc the defined path was used to travel and transport the goods 3000 bc will invented used with cart and wagons and 2000 bc road will began to consider with of uh, roads grades and materials and cars so as the times are uh, passed by the developments are taking places in terms of the material of the road in terms of purpose of the uh, construction of the road so the, the everything will changing by time to time so in the present scenario also whatever is the purpose for the last 10 years the purpose is totally different in different in today's time in terms of transportation aspect so these are the thing which is continuously changing with the time so we also need to change the transportation pattern we need to the time and based on the requirement of the passenger or the user so if you see that these are some pictorial view of the transportation system or the types of the road how the roads are constructed how why what are the purpose of use so you can change see the changes so initially it is some type of Uh, your small paved road, then it is a continuous paved road, and finally it is some flexible type means using a bituminous layer. So as I said that the transportation system is not only about the road. The transportation system is a combination of road and the road users. So the when we are we'll discuss about the transportation system, the definitely the not the roads, the basically the connector. the connector and the user so connector may be road connector may be flight connector may be ship connector may be any other mode so the modes is some the the representation of that connection and who is using the connection that is the commuter or the user so users are remain unchanged from the ancient time to the present time but this connector is sometimes is different from day to day based on their demand based on the technology based on the research and developments so as per the roman road if you see it is straight there is no gradient it's built of soft soil uh, removed hard stratum ridge and the thickness is about 0.75 meter to 1.2 meter so this is a simple, uh, the old age type of roman road you can see in various movies or even in, in through some videos next is the macadam construction so what is macadam macadam is a type of the road where we lay down some stone chips so basically surface surface coats with stone passing of 1.9 cm thick and 5 cm thick broken stone passing 3.75 mm thick and 10 cm thick broken stone so basically various type various sizes of stone so if there is one term is uh, mentioned that sieve i think everyone you have heard about the sieve so sieve analysis is the basic test for the aggregate for the uh, testing of the various properties of the aggregate so before construction of the uh, any uh, road or for any construction the aggregate is one of the primary raw material we require for any type of construction and we cannot use the uh, same type of aggregate in all in different type of project 
the, there are the, some protocols or guidelines are given as per some IS code that this size should be used in for that particular type of consumption. So this size uh, classification is done by the sieve analysis. So there is a sequence of sieves there. You can find in uh, uh, the what are the various types of sieves, how this sieve analysis test can be done. So if you have a, if you also have any doubt regarding the sieve analysis, you can contact me. Next is the comparison uh, comparison of macadam and the tail port. So what is tail port method? So tail port is a method which is uh, another method of construction of the road. So the what is the basic difference? So in ma macadam method, the subgrade slope is one in thirty six. But in tail port, the subgrade gave horizontal. There is be no um, slope deviation. In so macadam, the bottom layer broken stone passing five centimeter and thickness of ten centimeter. But in case of tail port, the heavy foundation stone varying seventy centimeter towards the edge of twenty two centimeter towards the centers. In macadam, uh, macadam method, the base and the surface stones consist of smaller stones, thickness of ten to five centimeter cross cross slope of one in 36 but in tail port method uh, two layers of broken stones are uh, before lying wearing course with a cross slope of one in 45 so basically based on based on the different type of the aggregate and different uh, gradient the macadam and the tail port construction method are differentiated next is uh, what are the various highway development process or the highway development act in indian scenario so in as i discussed that in the ancient times the roads are in the mohenjo daro in the harappa they use some block the block type of uh, roads so as i discussed in the okay you can again go back to the, the, uh, the this is the roman road so these are the basic road i have already discussed that these are the basic types of road next is the roads in the mughal period so after that uh, mohenjo daro the mughal are the uh, predator of the our indian society so they have uh, conquered the um, indian in 19th century and they started the road construction uh, in 1965 the lord dalhousie formed a pwd that, that is the public work different work department which still exist so this is a pwd is uh, constituted in 1865 so you can imagine that at that time the lord dalhousie has formed this pwd and now each is each state have some pwd and cpwd till now next the first committee came in picture in 1928 which is known as the jaikar committee this is the first committee which gives you some suggestion regarding the construction of the road or regarding some guideline for what should be the width what should be the construction method of the road so what this suggests that is income came in picture in 1928 so they told that they recommend that the road development considered as a national interest yes it should be a national interest extra tax levied on petrol from road users those who are using the uh, road uh, by some vehicles so they will be have to pay some extra on taxes for the uh, petrol for using of the petrol the semi official technical body form the different type of bodies have been formed bodies in the sense of suppose CME, CRRI that is the Central Road Research Institute then your IRC or th these are the some small bodies I am not saying that the IRC has formed that time no I am just giving the example what are the various types of bodies so semi official technical bodies have been formed the research organization should be instituted that is CRF in 1929 IRC in 1934 and CRRI at 1950. So these are the some small bodies have been constituted during the JCAR committee recommendation. So after that, the still the CRRI, IRC we are following continuously and we will follow in future also. So what is the CRF? So CRF is for constituted in 1929. So the consumer of petrol were charged an extra levy of 2.64 paisa per liter per gallon at that time 20 percent of the annual revenue retained as central service 80 percent of the allotted by central government to various states crf maintained the maintained by accountant general of the central revenue so basically the central revenue uh, agencies are maintained the crf so uh, central revenue forum or central revenue forum so the uh, control of the expenditure of the road wings 
of Ministry of the Transport. CRF Act 2000, it is revised in 2000, rate of duty on petrol and high speed diesel 2 rupees per litre. So basically these acts are continuously uh, uh, modified in after certain intervals of the time. Next is the IRC, IRC the Indian Road Congress that is substituted in 1934. So what they recommended, they recommended it to provide a pooling of experience and idea on planning, construction and maintenance of the road. So IRC had first introduced the term of planning. So what the planning is does meaning, what the actual the planning is the thing. So before that they have constructed the road without the proper planning. They have constructed but without the proper planning planning means okay i need to do this type of survey for construction of the road i knew i need to do that survey i need to do the survey through this uh, survey collection method so these are some planning we need to be carry forward from the stage zero to our final uh, completion of any project so the irc has provided an experience of this planning construction and the maintenance of the road Active body of controlling specification and standardization and recommendation on materials design, construction of the roads and bridges. So IRC has suggested that what are the various specification, what is the standard value and what is the recommended materials. As I said that this for uh, sieve analysis is one of the tests for a find out the uh, conduct, uh, conducted for the aggregate for uh, find out the properties of the aggregate. So they have give some standard value. Okay, suppose for impact test. We will take those uh, uh, aggregate which are passing 12 mm and retained on 10 mm. So these are the some proper some standard value which have already given by the IRC. So we have to uh, maintain the things to get a better uh, result for construction work. So the this thing have came in the picture in 1934. So the next is the technical activity carried by highway research board that is HRB and the committee of subcommittees. So these are the things have been recommended and constituted during the IRC 1934. Next the first motor vehicle act came in the picture in 1939. So what they suggested, they suggested to regulate the road traffic in the form of the traffic laws ordinance and the regulation. So whatever laws uh, we have seen the last to last year even also the traffic motor vehicles act have been changed so this act is first introduced in 1939 and after certain period the uh, the acts are revised based on the demand based on the behavior based on the necessity of the traffic movement next is the control of the driver vehicle ownership vehicle operation yes suppose we have to now we have to give a fine for drink and drive we have to give a fine walk and drive uh, sorry talk and drive and we have to pay some fine for not having the pollution certificate or not having the driving license. So these have these are the some protocols or the guidelines have suggested by this motor vehicle act. So the based on what are the punishment should be given to not obeying uh, the driving protocol by the driver or not obeying the uh, uh, protocol by the pedestrian during crossing the road. So these are the things. But this is particularly for the motor vehicle, which is a directly related to the motor vehicles related act. So next is the first uh, road plan is came in the picture is the Nagpur road plan. So this is the first road development plan which is for the period of 1943 to 1963. So what is the target? The target uh, uh, road length was 16 kilometer per 100 square kilometer area. Means for each 100 square kilometer area they, can, they need to constitute a 16 kilometer uh, uh, road for they, they, that is their target. So they have fulfilled the target during this 1963, during the 1943 and 1963. And uh, the gladding, the uh, most surprising thing is that they have achieved this goal even before their target set. So they have achieved by 1961. Next is the CRRI came in picture that is in 1950. So what the CRRI does? So CRRI it is one of the national laboratories of Council of Scientific and the Industrial Research. So CRRI basically do some research part. Research on the materials of the road, construction of the road. Suppose for construction of the road for the flexible pavement, the basic material, the surface materials is the bitumen. So how the bitumen should be tested or how this quality of the bitumen are tested. So the laboratory based tests have been done by the CRI. So this is basically Central Research uh, Road Research Institute. So from the name itself you can find out that this is a basically research institute where the uh, experiment related to our road have been conducted. Next is the National Highway Act 
in 1956. So this is the first act is introduced in 1939, and again it is uh, that is the Motor Vehicle Act, and this is the first National Highway Act came in the picture in 1956. So what they suggested, they suggested the maintenance of the National Highway, NH stand for the National Highway, taken by the central government. The central government empowered to declare any other highways. Okay, so next came in the picture is the second 20 year roadway development plan. So what they suggested, this is known as the Bombay Roadway Plan. So they have, they have a target of road length of 10,57,330 km or about 32 km per 100 square km. So initially they have a target of 16 km per 100 square km but later uh, next 20 years that is from 1961 to 1981 they have a target of 32 km per uh, per 100 square kilometer a rupees of 5200 crore for 1980 to 1981 was in uh, was invested for this plan based on the 1958 price of level at the at that uh, level of the price they have fixed a cost of rupees 5200 crore 1600 kilometer of expressway was included apart from that 10,57,330 uh, kilometers. They have also included 1,600 kilometers of the expressway. So a total uh, length of all category of the road achieved by 1974 itself. They have reached their target before the seven years of their target level. So that is a very impressive for that time of being because that time they didn't have the proper technology. They don't have proper equipment. Not the proper equipment is not the developed. The equipment we have today and the technology we have today that without those things they have finished the work 10 7 years before so this is a very uh, positive approach at that time so next is the hrb that is the highway research uh, road, uh, road research board that is the to give a proper direction and guidance to the road uh, research in activities objective to ascertain the nature and extent of the research required to correlate the research info uh, in, in into from various organization to coordinate and conduct correlation services to collect and disseminate result on research to channelize the consulting services so these are some objective of the hrb which is constituted in 1973 next is the ntpc is came in the picture in 1978 so in the liberal uh, liberalization of the transport sector so basically ntpc is the time when the liberalization has taken place the optimum inter model mix between railway and the road transport from this time onward the coordination between the road and the rail transport uh, that is came in the picture so suggestion one required for the road in rural area and tribal area and connect all villages with all with the low cost road so basically the main target is that to connect the hilly road from this time onward the construction of the roads in are taking place in full phase in the hilly area and to connect the village area to the urban area is one of the main objective of this NTPC. So the third 20 years road plan was developed uh, in 19 uh, during the 1981 to 2001. So what they have suggested? So they have suggested that prepared by the this is a Ministry of Shipping and Transport Corporation. So basically the shipping part will came in the picture in 1981 and 2001. Means during the third 20 years road development plan. Next is the Lucknow road plan. So this is the known as the Lucknow um, road plan. So this is a growth pattern investigated in various fields. Aim at increasing road length from 15 lakhs to uh, 15 lakhs 2700 kilometer in a year 1981 to 27 lakhs 200 kilometer by the year of 2001. So they have targeted, they have initiated in 1981 with a target of 15 lakhs 2070, but at the 2000 um, uh, in 2001 they have finished by 27 lakhs 200 kilometers. So you can uh, imagine the what are the amount of work they have done at that time. Next is the increase in the road density from say, 46 kilometer per square kilometer in 1981 to 82 kilometer per square kilometer in 2001. So they have just um, constructed a double amount of road in 2001 compared to the 1981. Next is what are the various types of the road pattern. 
so root pattern it may be a rectangular root pattern it may be a radial or the star or the block pattern it may be a circular pattern it may be grid pattern it may be hexagonal pattern or it may be a minimal travel pattern minimal travel pattern means uh, it depends on the types of the travel are making in that particular road so based on the travel they will go for a random type of the pattern so what are the advantage and the disadvantage of this type of the pattern so patterns is basically the connection between the uh, area so if we go for a any um, plan city we have to design the uh, highway or the transportation system in a very significantly and so that the uh, there will not be uh, any land vacant uh, which are not used uh, which make which can be used for the transportation but which is not used for to due to the improper planning so the planning for uh, selecting of a route for a particular area is very crucial for the planning of highway or the planning of the transportation so this is the uh, advantage so what is the advantages of the rectangular the rectangular plot may be a further divided into small rectangular block for construction of building places back to back having a road on their plot yes this is the today's concept for any plot if you want to sorry if you want to purchase any plot in any area so you can find out that the plots are divided in small 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 portion that portion are connected uh, to the road so this is the same concept have been given in the rectangular block pattern uh, it is in this pattern has been adopted for the city road the construction and maintenance of the road of this pattern is comparatively easier yes due to the uh, significant and the known pattern of the road because i know this road is going to only this direction or the road is taken only the right direction but if it is not in a planned way then the maintenance uh, the cost of the maintenance will grow increasing because we didn't have a proper planning uh, the proper drawing of that particular area so what is the limitation the limitation is the pattern is not very much convenient because at the intersection the vehicles face, face each other and the example is the chandigarh has a rectangular yes if you have visited the chandigarh chandigarh is one of the finest and the planned city if you see that the road and uh, are very uh, constituted very nicely with planned way in the same way if you have visited in uh, salt lake the calcutta that is also a planned city and the roads are constituted i have visited both the salt lake and the chandigarh so the road patterns are more or less same they are constructed in a planned way so that the roads are constituted the covered in a particular area so all houses on that particular area of the plots are somehow connected to the main road next is the radial or the block pattern what is the advantage is reduce the level of congestion at the primary bottleneck location uh, prevent the traffic from accessing local flow routes in the direction of the event uh, venue that operates in the favor of the grace of traffic flow if one is blocked then other side traffic can be moved yes if it is a radial you have two option more than two option so if one portion is jam traffic jam is there you can take a diverted route and you can uh, make your trip and uh, the fourth one is the vehicle face each other less than the block pattern yes in a circular the uh, collision the conflict or uh, in between two vehicles will be uh, comparatively low to the rectangular or the block pattern next is the limitation what is the limitation it proves particularly effective in two lane uh, ramp traffic does not have to march at the downstream end of the ramp safety uh, apparatus such as guide rail uh, transition grass at uh, attenuators and post supporters bases have not been designed to provide adequate protection at hazardous location from the vehicles coming from the opposite direction next is the radial or the star and the circular pattern so what is the advantage is the main advantage is that the traditional intersection with stop signs or traffic signal some of the most common type of crashes are uh, right angle left turn and the head on collision yes in head on collision is the most dangerous and uh, most uh, uh, fatal accident you can say for the road accident so uh, it is a very common thing in the uh, radial or the circular type of pattern so next is the inter, um, installing circular pattern in place of traffic signal can also reduce the likelihood of rear end crashes because roundabout improve the efficiency of the traffic flow they also reduce the vehicle emissions and fuel consumption yes these are the some advantages you can think of it for installing a or for construction of an, any circular type of pattern what is the limitation limitation on the central lines of the road leading to circular pattern should be properly aligned with the central eye line approach road should be sufficiently curved 
proper enough in advance of circular pattern to reduce the vehicle speed at the of the entering driver here the speed of the the speed of the vehicles which are entering in the road the turning radius should be sufficient enough but in circular pattern due to the uh, due to insufficient space because in circular pattern the one thing we keep in mind the space should be sufficient enough so that we can provide a circular car but if the circle the space is pro uh, available space is comparatively less then it is tough to uh, accommodate the vehicles which are turning to the major road to minor road or minor road to the major road keeping the same speed so these are the same uh, limit some limitation in due, uh, regarding your radial or the star or the circular pattern rule next is the radial or star and the creep pattern so what is the advantages so the advantages is that keep the vehicle traffic safe with a high proportion of freeway intersection reduce cut through traffic by similar or other means improve traffic flow in both direction used in savannah cellular structure what is savannah cellular structure we will discuss in later these are some of the basic advantages and the limitation next is the improved land use efficiency and unit density then what are the limitations so highland separating the approach and exit lanes known as the splitter island and should extend it far enough the traffic signs pavement marking and the lighting should be adequate so that the drivers are aware that they should reduce their traffic speed so these are some limitations the driver need to be followed in grid pattern so what is the advantage of hexagonal the three road meet uh, the built up area boundary by side of the hexagon and the limitation is traffic signs were meant uh, marking and lighting should be adequate so that the drivers are uh, aware, aware about uh, they should reduce the, their travel speed yes, in hexagonal um, pattern what the problem is that due to, due to the hexagonal shape the space required is the maximum the maximum space required for the hexagonal and for that we have to uh, install the traffic signal or the traffic light at each six location if there are six if it is a hexagonal so there will be six point and all the six point we need to install the traffic signal or the pavement marking so that the uh, driver is comparatively aware about about the each and every entry and the exit point of that particular intersection the uh, so due to the in number uh, more number of the intersection more number of the entry and exit point it creates some uh, confusion to the driver that is the main uh, concern issue in the hexagonal pattern but in the minimum travel pattern the advantage is this type of potential serious crashes essentially are eliminated and limitation traffic signs signal pavement marking and lighting should be adequate so that the driver are aware they should reduce their speed same like a hexagonal and inter intersection can be especially challenging for older drivers yes the drive older older not in the sense of experience the older in terms of the age so age is a vital point when it is a games uh, uh, we will discuss about the uh, driving phenomena so driving phenomena uh, is, so if suppose for, forget about the old person if some young person are still moving to a new point new town or the new area uh, without knowing the uh, road pattern or the road pattern so they will confuse now we have the smartphone you are in our hand we can on the google map and we can find out the road but it is very tough for uh, for a person who is not fluent to the smartphone or fluent to the google map because it is very tough to hold your mobile and drive because everyone don't have the mobile holder in their uh, bike or in their scooter or in their four wheeler and now if, you, if this is the case for some young generation this generation y now think of it is what will happen to the older person so this is very a tough thing so the proper uh, direction the proper uh, traffic sign traffic mar uh, marking and traffic signal should be installed at the location so that the uh, accident can be avoided so these are the uh, basic about some tra highway engine uh, highway protocols uh, the pattern of the road and the sub jaikar committee nagpur road plan your mumbai road plan and about the lucknow road plan so this is the base uh, just some basic about about the historical development of the highway so if you have any question i think you should, there will not be any doubt in this because this is basic uh, the, the theoretical theoretical concept of the basic thing still if you have any doubt you can reach me or you can ask me any time uh, through the mail or the uh, whatsapp number is given at the beginning so till the next classes thank you